All right, how's it going, y'all? Today, we're going over the four different ways you can migrate data from one Synology to another. So this is really focused on you've got a new Synology and you wanna switch over to using that new Synology as your one. And right now, I'm running off of 1522 plus and we're going to be migrating to a 923 plus. I just grabbed two random units. The 1522 is actually a better unit overall. All right, so there are four different ways you can migrate data in between two NASes and they all have their own pros and cons depending on your exact use case. And I'm actually gonna pull up, there's a great actual flow diagram right here that can really help you kind of go through that that I'm gonna be using as well. And the four of them are, that we're gonna talk about is hard drive migration. And that's actually what we're gonna do at the end of this video by far the simplest one to use. Then there is going to be migration assistant where it actually pulls the data from one NAS to another. Hyper backup, which is actually just doing a backup and restore, which has some major pros in terms of flexibility. And finally, the kind of rip and rebuild, which you essentially just build the new NAS as its own NAS and then just copy over applicable data and you kind of want to start over from scratch. So those are your different options that we're gonna talk about here. And we're kind of gonna go over every single one of the pros and cons of using them and how easy they are to use. So the first one we're gonna talk about is by far the simplest, and that is hard drive migration. Hard drive migration is incredibly simple, and we're actually gonna, just gonna do it at the end of this tutorial. Hard drive migration is insanely simple to do, and is probably one of the lowest risks. It is as easy as it sounds. What you're gonna do is you're just going to shut your unit down, pull out the drives out of the old unit, stick them in the new unit, and just turn it back on. And then within a matter of about 15 minutes, you're going to be up and running. And it's going to be very hard for you to tell that you migrated, other than the fact that now you're running off a new NAS. This is great for the times where if the old NAS is just completely busted, or if you are doing a huge update for performance. So say you have like an 18, 17 plus, and you know, it's just really not keeping up with your workflow, but you don't want really much of anything else to change. Well, what you can do is actually just buy a new 18, 21 plus, take your drives out, stick in the new one. Everything just carries on over for the most part. Option number two is going to be migration assistant and migration assistant is actually pretty cool how it works. What it does is it essentially just pulls over everything from one NAS to another. It does require, and all the other options we're gonna be talking about here also do, it does require you to get new drives, which is a very common thing people like to do. You get new drives, and what you can also do is use your old NAS as a backup. Highly recommend doing that. But what you do with Migration Assistant is you buy a brand new NAS with brand new drives that has at least as much space as your old NAS and space after RAID and redundancy, however you wanna set that up. Then what Migration Assistant does is it actually automatically pulls over everything, your data, your configs, all that stuff from your old NAS to the new NAS. And a really cool thing about it is, it actually does this with very minimal downtime. For people who are interested, it actually creates an iSCSI LUN, essentially, that it makes it high availability between the two units for a short amount of time, is the easiest way to actually kind of explain this. It's very close to high availability because they're kind of the same process. So what that means is, the entire time you have about maybe five minutes of downtime on your old unit. And then while the major migration is happening where it's copying over those 20 terabytes of data from the old unit to the new unit, you can keep using the old unit. And then whenever you finally switch over, everything that you've worked on since you started the migration is still sent on over. There are a few limitations to what you can do, but none of them are major. So while the migration is going on, there are a few things it doesn't let you do disabling SSH, changing the account, moving the storage location of packages on the source device. Really a lot of this stuff is not stuff that you would be doing at all. Closest thing would be your bond and your vSwitch settings that you might want to do. But other than that, you can see this list is very, very, very small. And that is great. So you can pretty much keep using the current NAS you've got until you switch over very easily for a very long time. To do this, I'm gonna go over a basic thing here. What you're gonna do is you're going to essentially do the very first basic setup of the NAS. All you need to do is you create your storage pool and then you install Migration Assistant on your new NAS. You need to make sure you've got enough space on your new destination for all of your storage on your original one. So the source, that's your original NAS, even if you've only used one terabyte 
but you've got 100 terabyte storage pool, you need to make sure this has at least 100 terabytes on it. Because one unfortunate thing about Migration Assistant, which is also why it works so well, is it doesn't just copy over your data, it actually copies over the entire volume as a LUN. And so for that reason, you have to have the entire volume migrated over. So even if you've only used two terabytes of 100 terabytes, you need to make sure you've got at least 100 terabytes on your new unit. And it will take the time to migrate all 100 terabytes over. That is probably one of its largest downsides, though the entire time the NAS is fully usable. One other limitation when using Migration Assistant that a lot of people do buy a new NAS for is you have the inability to switch from ext4 to btrfs. Migration Assistant, as well as hard drive migration, migrate everything. And that includes your volume exactly how it was. So if you bought a J model and it did not have BTRFS at the time, or you did what I actually did the very first NAS I got and installed EXT4 on your NAS, even though it had BTRFS as an option, and you're like, dang, I'm really kicking myself for installing EXT4 instead of BTRFS, both Migration Assistant and Hard Drive Migration will both actually keep your volumes as EXT4 and not be able to convert them to BTRFS. So that is another limitation with this one. Another thing to do before you do this is make sure to have the original NAS as up to date as possible. It just makes it much more seamless from my experience. You can follow this help article right here. It works really well and it makes it pretty simple to go ahead and run. Everything tends to work really well and I've never had any issues using migration assistant or hard drive migration. Both of them have worked incredibly well and have switched over really easily. Migration Assistant and Hard Drive Migration will both essentially migrate all of your packages and apps almost identically with a very, very, very small amount of limitations. I think Virtual Machine Manager is the only real one that'll change them. And both of them will also do an update. So one thing is if you were running like DSM 6.2 and still on old Synology Photo Station, it will be updated to DSM 7 and you will go from photo station to photos. That's the only time packages will really change. It just kind of doesn't update at the end. So that would be the one limitation with that. But otherwise, the packages just get migrated over beautifully. All right, so now for migration option number three, it's gonna be hyper backup and restore. So you can either hyper backup to a different volume and then use that, or you can also hyper backup up to a external drive I really enjoy recommending using an external drive for using your migration. And Hyper Backup does not restore everything identically. And when we're talking about this, we're gonna be talking about Hyper Backup folder and packages, not entire volume. Entire volume is a new version that came out in DSM 7.2. And essentially that will restore your NAS in the exact same way that Migration Assistant would. So this is the case where you want to be able to switch from ext4 to btrfs or you want to really just bring over the data and kind of want to be able to reconfigure stuff. When you're using a hyper backup and restore, you don't keep all of your settings. You have to reconfigure packages and some things like that. And so it's not a completely seamless transition from the old NAS to the new NAS. You also have much larger downtime. So I don't really recommend doing this for offices who are trying to use the NAS during this time. Both hard drive migration and migration assistant will both be very, very, very short downtime. And so offices can continue to work for a long time and it not be a big deal. When you migrate using a hyper backup and restore, the biggest downside is the fact that you essentially don't get any changes you made since that backup was completed on the new NAS. So with migration assistant, any changes that are made while this migration is in progress, are actually reflected on the new NAS. So you can keep using your old NAS until the migration's done. With Hyper Backup, it's a backup. So you're restoring from a point in time backup. And so any modifications made after that point in time backup are not going to be restored. So you need to keep that in mind. The largest advantage of a Hyper Backup and Restore is the fact that you can migrate from ext4 to btrfs. This will allow you to do that very easily because it doesn't do a bare metal restore. Instead, what we're talking about here is it's just copying your files back over, copying your settings back over and reconfiguring its packages as best as possible. However, it does not reconfigure everything identically. And there's a large laundry list of limitations when you're using regular hyper backup about what is and what is not restored on a restore. 
it does a really good job with files, folders, and users, but apps and packages, you kind of have to reconfigure, unfortunately. And finally, option number four is kind of the manual route. Just create the new NAS as a new NAS and copy over your files as required. This is really good for, hey, I did a lot of dumb stuff at the old NAS, let's just start new. And it's really good for that. You can also use a BTRFS snapshot replication to replicate from the old NAS to the new NAS. And this allows you to be constantly sending over your files and having a really easy switch over in the future. I've done that a fair amount of times, though this one is by far the most manual of those operations. All right, so now let's go ahead and just follow this great flow chart that I'll leave a link down in the description below. And we can go ahead and see this. So if your NAS is broken, you got to do migration assistant. That's kind of your only option because, well, the one thing that still works are your drives. If you're not going to buy new drives, you also use a hard drive migration. That's your only option. But if you do need to buy drives, this is where you've got options. This statement right here is kind of hard to understand. Is your new volume twice as large as the size of your data? So if you answer no, this is saying right here that you kind of need to use the hyper backup methodology there because you can't dump your data there. It's kind of confusing. So what this is implying is, hey, you don't have enough data on the new NAS to do a hyper backup and a restore all in the same NAS. It's kind of confusing there. If you were to just like have an external hard drive and use that as your backup and then migrate, this statement's not applicable. Kind of confusing on that. The short downtime absolutely wins with Migration Assistant as we've talked about in the past. Same thing with keeping your packages because Migration Assistant brings over all those configs beautifully and there's very, very, very little change when you're using Migration Assistant. However, where hyper backup is really valuable is changing the file system because other than manually copying stuff over, hyper backup's the only one that will allow you to change from an ext4 volume to a btrfs volume without too much of a headache. There are a few other limitations right here. You kind of have a use case scenario. I'll leave a link down in the description below to this in case you needed more information. But overall, in general, I would really recommend, if possible, sticking to either hard drive migration or migration assistant, especially if you don't want to do massive reconfiguration. In my experience, hyper backup does not restore everything as easy as you would think it would. And so it can be a bit of a pain and really should only be used if you're looking to switch from ext4 to btrfs, in my opinion. All right, so now let's go ahead and actually use the hard drive migration process to go between these two units. And I'm actually not going to do anything whatsoever to this 1522 plus. And we're actually going to show it as if the 1522 plus just completely died one day. So I'm just going to actually pull the power, which is a big no, no. And so we're going to kind of pretend like it hard crashed one day. Note, if you do have the ability to, and the NASA online, I would highly recommend updating as far as the unit will do within DSM and updating all of your packages before doing this migration. That way, any bugs that happen from a update, you can resolve them before also doing the migration. So you only have to worry about one thing at a time. Now I'm literally just going to switch my drives over. Note, I'm going from a five bay to a four bay, but in this case, it's fine because I've only got four drives in this five bay. All right, so we just heard the beep. So we should be able to go, actually just refresh this name because I used a local host name, but probably the best thing to do is go to find.synology.com. And then find your specific NAS. You probably just have one. And you, we're gonna see right here that its status is migratable. We do in fact actually do a DSM reinstallation so we do lose a couple things that I'll talk about here. One really key piece of information that you need to make sure is if this says anything other than migrate, and if it says any words like all data will be deleted, stop immediately and figure out what's going on. Contact support if you have to, because it should not say anything like data deleted. Right here, we're going to be given the option to retain the system configurations. 
or we could also reset the system configuration and only import the volumes, but we're gonna do the entire thing. We're gonna go ahead and do a fresh installation. And so we're gonna pull the most recent update. This is why it's a really great idea to update to the highest version of DSM possible before migrating, just to make sure that you don't go between two different OSs. And now it's going to reinstall DSM. While we're going over this, I should mention there's a few very small limitations here. Most of them have been removed on out. You may have to just double check your operating system type. These are for units if you had a J model. Essentially go ahead and look up your exact architecture. You can use this table right here to figure out what that is. Most of the time I've not had an issue with this because generally you can always go up, but it's just a good idea to check this table right here. And then another thing that's not a bad idea to do is I personally recommend disabling the SSD cache if you've got one before migrating just to limit the weirdness that will happen. So whenever I do a hard drive migration, I first disable SSD cache and then reset up on the new unit. All right, well now that unit is just booting on up, we can hear it. We're gonna hear a beep in a minute here. And we should see all of our configurations just come right back on over. There are a few very small things that you'll need to reinstall. For if you're using an LDAP server, you need to reinstall that. Reset up your auto block settings. And a couple of specific things. Surveillance station, you do need to make sure your licenses do that. But overall, you can see this list is very, very, very minimal. One other thing I realized I should mention is if you have previously set up a DHCP reservation for your NAS, so that's where your router will give your NAS the same local IP address every single time it connects, that is going to have to be changed over. Oh, there's the beep. So DHCP reservations are based off of MAC addresses and MAC addresses are unique to the exact ethernet port and ethernet chip on every single device. So every single device in your house that has an ethernet port or Wi-Fi has a unique MAC address, at least everything that's following proper specifications. And so that is what is used for the DHCP reservation. You will just need to update that to the new MAC address in your router. Just like that, everything carried on over. You will see that we are having indexing processing again. It does rebuild the indexing and I have seen that Synology Photos will also re-index AI stuff. But really quickly, with just that amount of time, we can see everything migrated on over. And one of the large values of this was the fact that we were able to update ahead of time. And so overall our setup went really smoothly. We can see in Storage Manager, everything got brought on over identically, pretty much without any issues whatsoever. We've migrated and that is really it. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this overview. Go and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make down in the comments below. And if you wanna hire me, there's a link for that down in the description below. All right, have a good one, bye.